I've got wires that are 15 inches long and I'm gonna put them on a 14 inch snare drum, how? Hey there, my name is Joel. And recently a friend of mine came over to the house and brought his new acquisition. It is a snare drum that he purchased because of my recommendation. He actually reached out to me a few weeks ago, um, sent me a text saying that uh, he wanted me to listen to a song and he really dug the snare sound. He was wondering if there was a relatively inexpensive drum that would sort of give him a similar type of sound. Now, he specifically said he was wanting, he thought of it as a kind of a heavy metal snare drum. Not a heavy metal snare drum, a heavy, but metal. But, but metal. Snare drum. He wanted a drum that had a really aggressive sound, it was a big sound, maybe a Ludwig Black Beauty or some sort of a heavy kind of brass, maybe even a cast drum of some type. But he didn't really have the money for those things necessarily. He didn't want to spend that much anyway. And I got to thinking about it, and the drum that really came to mind is one that I, I have one of. It's a Tama Mastercraft steel snare drum from the early 1980s. And so I recommended he buy one. It has die cast hoops. Uh, it's got extended snare wires, which I really, really love. I have several Mastercraft and or roller bed snare wires, the snare mechanism on that drum. Uh, and it's a great sounding snare mechanism. And of course, I got to thinking about it and went, you know, this would be good fodder for a video. And I will say that even though this is not really part of my drum physics video, it is something that I think is really interesting because there's a lot of kind of physics involved in extended snare wire designs when compared to traditional designs that we're familiar with nowadays. So what do I mean by extended snare? I mean, well, basically the snares extend past the edges of the shell. So basically snares that are longer than the drum is wide in diameter, basically. So 14 inch drum and 15 inch snares, these are extended past the diameter of the drum. And there are a few things that make extended snare designs um, interesting compared to regular designs. And it's what I have come to term horizontal tension versus vertical tension. And what do I mean by that? Well, extended snare designs are by design or really by necessity, what I call horizontal tension designs where um, typical snare drums are vertical designs. So let me explain the vertical first. Basically, when you engage a snare strainer, it's raising the carriage, which has the cords or the straps that hold the snare wires on the bottom of the drum. And it raises those vertically. And you're thinking, well, that's not really vertical tension, Joel, because the straps or whatever's holding the wires on bends around the bottom bearing edge of the snare drum and it's pulling on the snares. So really that's horizontal tension there, even though it's kind of vertical to begin with. And literally that's not really true because it's not truly horizontal. It's close, it's really close to horizontal, but it's really kind of coming in at an angle. And why is that? That's because of the snare beds. The thing that sets snare drums apart from other drums in terms of the shell construction is that the bottom of it, the snare side, have snare beds. Why do they have snare beds? Well, I have a set of snare wires here. These are 14 inch typical. Uh, they're actually uh, missing a wire and this one looks to be a little bit bent, but it still works great for my purposes. So if you actually just sort of look at this here, you see it's bent or it's kind of sagging in the middle, right? Gravity's pushing on it. So the middle's lower than the edges. Um, and you could, you know, of course, pull out on this thing and you go, well, now it's flat. Well, really, technically, gravity's still going to have its way. The center is still going to be lower than the sides. So how do you get this curved shape to play nicely with a flat drum head? Well, you kind of don't. And by flat drum head, I mean like if, you know, a quality drum has a nice flat plane of the bearing edge, whatever the shape of your bearing edge, whether it's like a dual 45 or a 30 degree round over or, or whatever. Um, if you were to flip that drum over and put it down on a very flat surface and shine a light on the inside, you wouldn't see any light through because it's making contact all the way around because the plane of the bearing edge is flat. Uh, that's true of the bottom of the snare drum with the exception of the snare beds. If you ever look at the bottom of a snare drum, you'll see that if you set it 
onto a flat table, you'll see that there are raised areas 180 degrees from each other. And they can be deep and narrow, or they can be really wide and really shallow. And, you know, there's different kinds of snare beds. But where the snares lie on that bottom head, they raise the bearing edge by either cutting or molding, forming somehow this sort of curvature for the snare beds. Well, why do they do that? Well, they do that to create the bow that the snares naturally want to see. Because as this thing's laying in the snare bed, on the edges, it's higher than the rest of the bearing edge. 90 degrees from the snare beds is the low point of the bearing edge, and that straight across the middle of the drum ensures that the middle of the drum is low, but the drum head conforms to the shape of the bearing edge when it's tensioned. So that means that the high point of the snare bed is higher than the middle of the snare bed. So it basically forms this convex or concave. I think it's convex. Anyway, it forms, you know, this shape and makes the snares fit nicely against the head, particularly when tensioned to a point where they're going to be responsive. You can tension them super tight and they don't become really responsive until you start really laying into the drum. But if you tension them to where they're responding well at all dynamic uh, levels, they kind of are curved a little bit. And so the snare bed makes that curve possible. It also means that the tension that's coming from the straps or the cords around that bearing edge at the snare bed, it's high on that spot and kind of going down to the middle of the head. So it's not horizontal, it's actually kind of coming in at an angle. And I just refer to that as vertical. It's not really vertical, but it's coming in at an angle that is not truly horizontal. However, extended snare designs, since they are not using the edge of the drum to sort of turn that energy from vertical to horizontal, it's actually using additional hardware that is set up such as to be flush with the majority of the bottom head. There's still a little bit of snare bed there, but because it's being done with hardware, th that energy can be truly, that tension can truly be made horizontal. And so that means you don't have to have such deep snare beds. And strangely enough, um, you actually know of a very popular horizontal tension drum that's actually not an extended wire design, and that is, the Rogers Dynasonic uses this little assembly here, which has a thumb screw that tensions the snare wires horizontally. Now this entire assembly does fit underneath a 14 inch snare drum, so it is not an extended design, but it is a horizontal design. And as many of you probably know, the snare beds on a Dynasonic are virtually non-existent. In fact, I'm not really a historian of Rogers drums. Uh, I don't know as much about them as I do like Ludwig and Tama, some other brands. But my understanding is that some of the prototypes of the Dynasonic actually had no snare beds at all. The intention was to try to make it function well with a completely flat plane for the bottom head. But gravity does kind of, you know, get its due and it did need to still have a little bit of a very, very, very shallow, very mild snare bed cut into it. So Dynasonics do have snare beds, but they're just really, really, really shallow because of the horizontal tension of the short wires. Whereas all the other horizontal tension designs that I'm aware of are extended wires. And that means that gravity is gonna have its way even more because these wires are so much longer and you put them under tension, perhaps the same tension that you would the Dynasonic snares, they're gonna sag more in the middle. And I actually like that term because I like the effect of that sound. That little bit of sag that it does have when the tension is set to respond well at a, at a low dynamic really does um, kind of extend the rattle. I hate to use the word rattle, it sounds so negative, but I don't mean it negative at all. I love the effect of it. It just makes backbeat sound really great. A little extra white noise, a little bit of length to the sound, a little bit more um, authority or something. It's just a really, really great sound while still being very, very responsive and very crisp at soft dynamic levels. So the horizontal tension with a shallower snare bed and then the little bit of gravity that's happening in the middle of the snare wires when you have them tensioned appropriately for low dynamic ranges gives the, the louder backbeats just a really, really great quality. And I love that sound. 
So sound, Joel, what about sound? Well, I do have some sound clips. Uh, I don't have a whole lot. I was kind of hoping to do a couple different tunings, but it took us a little while to get the uh, drums set up properly with the new snares and adjusting the roller beds and stuff on a 40 plus year old drum. And by the time we were actually rolling and put the new heads and everything, got it all dialed in, uh, he had to go. <laughs> But I did have a chance to play the drum, and then I used the TuneBot to replicate the tunings with the same types of heads on a Tama Powerline snare drum, which is the same exact identical drum, same shell, same muffler, lugs, lug count, the hoops, die-cast hoops. Everything was absolutely identical, the heads, everything, with the exception of the types of snares. The Powerline has normal snares, and the Mastercraft has the extended snares. So listen to these two clips. I only have one tuning, like I say. Uh, so if you wished it was lower or wished it was higher, I'm sorry, it's actually fairly high. It's a little above uh, you know, mid-tension, I guess. Listen for the sound of the snare wires on soft hits and then on heavy backbeats. Because with the soft hits, in order to get the power line snare drum, normal snares, to respond at the softer dynamic that I like means that at medium dynamics and up, the snare wires are rattling more than I would really prefer. It's not a bad sound. I would happily record with the drum, and as you listen to it, I mean, it's a fine sound. But when you listen to the Mastercraft, how it responds well at soft dynamic levels, but then at medium and louder dynamic levels, it's not as rattly though the louder hits do have that little bit of sag that makes the backbeat so satisfying. So listen specifically for those things. I'm kind of pointing it out. Maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe that's kind of cheating, telling you what you're going to hear. But uh, do listen for those things because that really is the difference between a horizontal tension extended wire design versus your typical everybody makes it normal 14-inch vertical tension design. So I hope this is interesting. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you like this kind of geeky content, <laughs> well, you'll find it here because I'm full of it. Thanks for watching this. I really, really appreciate you being here. And please feel free to post your comments on the things that you observe about these two drums. Particularly if you're a younger player, are you familiar with extended snare designs? Is this new to you? Did you know there were snare drums once available back in the old days that had these long snare wires on it and these really cumbersome mechanisms? Have you ever played them before? I'm curious just to see. So feel free to comment. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. And for those of you out there who like myself love the sound and the performance of horizontal tension, extended wire designs, I would love to hear from you. So thank you again for watching. I hope things are going well for you and I really appreciate you being here and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.
So, in front of it. Oh, you want it in front again? Or maybe, I don't know. I, but also... Do you want to check your like hoop it's... and make sure it's flat, flush? Sure, flush, sure.